waters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, the bit earlier at about 7 a.m., a group from the coast. Welcome to Hashtag PH Vote 2013. Today on Rappler, President Aquino jabs China, telling countries in the South China Sea disputes to follow the law. The Defense Department says it received over 600 million pesos from the Disbursement Acceleration Program. Well, if we remove the PIDAF, uh, that means that uh, Congress is going to start doing its jobs. Ang trabaho ng congressman ay gumawa ng batas, hindi para magmudmun ng pera. Hindi para... And the legal counsel of a pork barrel petitioner says Congress will be forced to scrutinize the budget if the pork barrel is removed. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. President Benigno Aquino urges countries involved in maritime disputes in the South China Sea to, quote, follow the rule of law. Aquino refers to the unprecedented case the Philippines filed against China before a United Nations tribunal. In a statement for the 23rd Association of Southeast Asian Nations Summit in Brunei, Aquino says the Philippines' case against China is, quote, anchored on international law. He says, quote, Clearly, our development as a region cannot be realized in an international environment where the rule of law does not exist. This sea, known by many names, a problem now, presents an opportunity for ASEAN and all other parties to collectively exercise the observance of the rule of law. Aquino pushes for the, quote, expeditious conclusion of the ASEAN-China Code of Conduct on the South China Sea. But his statement is likely to agitate Beijing. In 2012, China called Aquino rude for bringing up the Philippines' maritime dispute with China in an ASEAN meeting. China does not agree with the internationalization of South China Sea disputes, preferring bilateral talks with each of the countries involved. China finds the UN case unacceptable because it involves a third party. But the Philippines wants to pursue its case against China, saying it had, quote, exhausted almost all political and diplomatic avenues for a peaceful settlement of the dispute. Maritime territorial disputes and trade talks are expected to dominate talks during the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN Summit in Brunei. The talks, which include Southeast Asian nations, China, Japan, South Korea, and the United States, come after an Asia-Pacific summit in Bali, Indonesia. U.S. President Barack Obama is not at the meetings because of problems at home, the U.S. government shut down. It's now up to Secretary John Kerry to show Washington support for its Asian allies in the face of Beijing's uncompromising territorial claims to most of the South China Sea. The Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Brunei all have claims to the waters. China signaled ahead of the meetings that it would not welcome attempts to raise the issue. On Monday, China's Vice Foreign Minister Lu Zhenmin says, quote, Involvement by foreign countries usually involves their own agenda, and it will not help build consensus or shore up mutual trust between countries in this region. Earlier this year, Obama said he planned to push for an agreement between China and ASEAN on a code of conduct at sea. The Brunei talks will also deal with ASEAN's attempt to establish a common market to better compete with economic powers China and India. The bloc is pushing an ambitious 60-nation free trade zone called the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. The initiative is seen as rivaling the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a 12-nation trade pact championed by Washington. It's not just lawmakers that got a share of the executive's controversial Disbursement Acceleration Program, or DAP. In a press release, the Defense Department says it received 665.6 million pesos during fiscal year 2011 to 2012. The bulk of the funding was allotted to the Philippine Air Force, or PAF, and the Presidential Security Group, or PSG. Philippine Air Force received 397.3 million pesos for on-base housing facilities, procurement of communication equipment, and the implementation of various projects. The PSG received 248.3 million pesos to repair buildings, install CCTV equipment, and upgrade communications equipment. The DAP came under fire after constitutionalists questioned whether or not it was legal. It moved around budget items without the approval of Congress. The Budget Department says the DAP is supposed to boost economic growth, but critics called the money a bribe. After Senator Jingoy Estrada said senators who voted to convict former Chief Justice Renato Corona got 50 million pesos each after the impeachment trial. 
A Commission on Audit report shows the Office of Environment Secretary Ramon Paje overspent on food by 3,000 percent. It had a budget of only 704,000 pesos for catering services for 2012, but it spent 30 times more for a total of 22.09 million pesos. In the COA report released Friday, auditors found Paje's office served lunches during conferences worth between 550 and 600 pesos per head. Auditors say the food supply contracts did not go through required public bidding. A day after oral arguments on the legality of the pork barrel, Senator Miriam Santiago says the Supreme Court has the power to determine if there was grave abuse of discretion in the pork barrel system. Santiago says the court is not bound by the so-called political question doctrine, which holds that a court should refuse to decide an issue involving the, quote, exercise of discretionary power by the executive or legislative branch of government. It was a key point of contention in the oral arguments. Santiago says she agrees with the petitioners in saying the doctrine does not apply to the case. She says the cases on the pork barrel deal with whether or not the executive and legislative committed grave abuse of discretion in spending public funds. On the first day of oral arguments on the pork barrel, lawyers of the petitioners urged Supreme Court justices to strike down the congressional and presidential pork barrel for violating separation of powers and checks and balances. Attorney Raymond Fortune, legal counsel of the petitioner, says the pork barrel system undermines the power of the executive by allowing lawmakers to identify projects and interfere with implementation after the passage of the budget bill. Congress, Congress has to be the one to say, this is the money and these are the projects that I want you to do. See, the, the president has absolutely no discretion on how the money is going to be used. If we're, we're talking of a situation where Congress just goes, okay, here's the money, bahala ka na. Mm -hmm. Then you now have an unbridled power given to the president to decide how the money is going to be spent, how much money for each particular project or, or activity or whatnot. And Responding to arguments that the president can use the pork barrel as an incentive for lawmakers like for example, to pursue mm, areas of reform, uh, Fortune says it may create a system of corruption. When the president has a legislative agenda, okay. maybe that's, that's what we can call it, uh, a legislative agenda, meaning that the president says, I need certain bills passed, mm -hmm. I want these bills. But, but you see, if the bills per se are really for the good of the country, why do you need money to in give us an incentive to congressmen? That mm -hmm. is real politic indeed. But can't, can't you see that by, having, by giving the president so much money in order to dangle the moolah incentive. to congressmen, you are actually creating a... <coughs> a system of corruption. Fortune adds, scrapping the pork barrel system will not lead to a constitutional crisis. Uh, the, the most that I can <coughs> see here uh, is that, well, the congressmen don't have the money that uh, they used to feast upon. Ang trabaho ng congressman ay gumawa ng batas, hindi para magmudmun ng pera, hindi para magpaskolar, hindi para mag magbigay ng medical assistance to sa mga mahirap. Fortune says removing the pork barrel would force lawmakers to scrutinize the budget and make it difficult for the executive to realign funds. Well, if we remove the PDAF, uh, that means that uh, Congress is going to start doing its job. Specifically, you're now going to see the you're now going to see number one. You're going to see a lot of congressmen being actively involved during the budget process. Turned about now, but because they don't have a PDAF. Now what happens is that you now have each congressman just scrutinizing the budget like hounds. So what happens now? Number one, we get a lot of savings. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna need a lot of money for, for coming out with a, with, a, with a yearly budget. Number two, you now have the executive just so hogtied with a very detailed budget that it's going to be very difficult for a realignment or a movement of funds like what uh, this DAP is all about. Why? Hindi na pwede yung mga projects na hindi na implement and now which will now be quote unquote be considered a savings.
Now everybody's going to be interested. The government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or the MILF, will try to close a deal on power sharing during the 41st round of talks in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The negotiations, which began Tuesday, come as Zamboanga City recovers from the bloody siege by rebel forces of the MILF's rival group, the Moro National Liberation Front. The Moro National Liberation Front. The MNLF staged the Zamboanga siege after it felt sidelined in the ongoing peace process. Both the government and the MILF say that what the MNLF wants to renegotiate will be addressed by the current peace process with the MILF. In this round of talks, both sides will discuss how to share power between the national government and the proposed Bangsamoro entity. They will also continue discussing details of the annex on normalization, which includes the decommissioning of arms. The MILF also wants to introduce new provisions about the structure of the ministerial form of government or how the future Bangsamoro government will take shape. In a ministerial form of government, people elect members of the legislature who in turn elect their chief minister. It's a deviation from the current system in the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao where registered voters elect members of the legislature and executive. Government Peace Panel Chair Miriam Coronel Ferrer says this ministerial form of government will be fleshed out in the Bangsamoro Basic Law. Almost a month after the bloody Zamboanga city siege, the Justice Department files rebellion charges and violation of international humanitarian law against Moro National Liberation Front founder Noor Miswari, Commander Habir Malik, and 59 MNLF members. The cases are based on testimonies of more than two dozen witnesses, including she Catholic priest Michael Ufana, who was held hostage by the group. Justice Secretary Laila de Lima says the rebellion charges are based on attacks on government forces, arson, and rebels plan to declare independence at the city hall. More than 9,700 houses and buildings were burned during the standoff. Damage to property is estimated at 200 million pesos. The rebels are also charged with violating international humanitarian law for hurting civilians and using them as shields. The Justice Department says at least 10 hostages were killed and 75 others injured. The bloody three-week siege forced more than 100,000 people to leave their homes. A suspected bomb threat stalls traffic at the intersection of EDSA and F.B. Harrison in Manila Wednesday night. The Metro Manila Development Authority says an unidentified man threw a suspicious bag onto the roof of a passing bus. Traffic in the area is stopped and motorists are advised to take C5 instead. Tropical Depression Santi continues to move closer to Luzon Wednesday. Its center is estimated at 510 kilometers east of Virac, Catanduanes. On Wednesday, State Weather Bureau Pagasa says Calabar Zone, Bicol Region, Visayas, Mindanao, and the provinces of Mindoro, Marinduque, and Roblon will have cloudy skies with light to moderate rain showers. Metro Manila and the rest of the country will have partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number two, Peter Higgs of Britain and Francois Englert of Belgium win the Nobel Physics Prize for the discovery of the God particle, the Higgs boson that explains why mass exists. The Nobel Prize jury honors the two scientists for the quote, theoretical discovery of a mechanism that contributes to our understanding of the origin of mass of subatomic particles. In 1964, Higgs theorized the boson as the particle that gave mass to matter as the universe cooled after the Big Bang. For over three years, hundreds of scientists have been looking for the boson at the CERN Laboratory's Large Hadron Collider. At number six, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation wants to build the next generation toilet to solve the lack of sanitation facilities in the developing world. On October 2, the foundation launched the Reinvent the Toilet Challenge in India, a design competition to create an affordable and self-contained toilet that attacks pathogens. The challenge is in partnership with the government of India. The foundation hopes to tap the manufacturing expertise and low labor costs of India to build a better toilet. And at number nine, a Philippine drama about migrant families in Israel emerges as a front-runner for the top prize at Asia's premier film festival this week. The film, Transit, makes it to the new Currents competition at the 18th Busan International Film Festival. In September, the Film Academy of the Philippines selected the film as its entry for next year's Academy Awards after it won the major prize at the Cinemalaya Independent Film Festival in August.
For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com the rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel, and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have affected our readers the most. These 10 stories have gotten the most votes on their mood meter and have affected our readers the most emotionally. If you take a look today, um, you've got some interesting one that are purple. We haven't seen this in a while. The bus hostage issue hounds Aquino and APEC, 81% annoyed, 10% angry, and concerns over U.S. shutdown, possible default spreads. You've got 45% annoyed and 45% don't care. Um, interesting, though, is the mood of the day is the story that's gotten the most number of votes shows it. Megan Young, people constantly need help. You have 60% inspired and a strange 33% angry of that 60% inspired, that bright green showing the mood of the day. Today, most people are inspired. That is Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, October 9th, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.